sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And I watch them roll away again Yeah, I'm just sitting on the top of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting in the dark of the bay Wasting time Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Sitting in the Dock of the Bay, a kind of simplified acoustic version, but I'm going to show you the really cool little riff that happens in the chorus as well, because it's so iconic. Kind of so it's loosely based the uh, Otis Redding version, but, uh, you know, there's many different covers of this song that you might like to check out. So uh, let's start off by looking at the chord sequence for the verse. So what's going on here? We've got a bar of G going to a bar of B7. Then a bar of C, going to a bar of A. We've got that sequence again. So we've got G, going to B7, going to C, and then going to A. Now into the chorus, we're going G, and then to E. Back to G, and then down to E. Back to G for a bar, then to A. Back to G, and then down to E. I always, I must admit, I always feel it funny, or it sounds funny to me going to an E major. It sounds to me kind of like it's E minor, but on the record it's definitely E major. So it's this funny kind of ambiguity between the E major and the E minor. So if it, if it irks you, you could always play E minor, you know, whatever you like the sound of, I guess, if it's your cover. Um, interestingly, the little guitar riff that goes... He, he doesn't play the, either the major or the minor on that kind of a sus2 chord which is neither major or minor. It's kind of interesting way of getting around it that you might want to check out as well. But anyway, let's start to look at a little bit more of the strumming. So that you've, we've got both of those chord sequences down now. Very, very easy chord sequences. Um, so once you, the first thing that you want to do is get the chord sequences down and just be able to play the fours through, like just like I was doing there. So going, sitting in the morning, be seven. I'll be seeing when the evening ain't Then to G and the ships roll B7 And I'll be seeing them away Yeah, I'll just be G and in the dark of the E Watching the G chord rolling I'll be G'ing in the dark of the A, wasting G E T. He was a little bit early there, but you hopefully you get what I mean. So it's really important that you get that so the chord changes are nice and even and you're strumming in time before you start playing about with the rhythm. So once you've done that and you feel confident with it, the next thing that you probably want to do is try and Fancy the rhythm up a little bit. Maybe you're going to go, uh, that kind of thing. You know, that's old faithful. So it's just simply down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. That pattern works really good for this song. I mean, you could use lots of different chord you know, strumming patterns, but uh, that one particularly works really well. If you want to get a little bit more like the record though, we need a thing called the push. That's what I've written out for you in the songbook there. Now, what a push is, is bringing a chord forward a little bit, a little bit earlier than you might think, normally an eighth note early. So if we look at this G to the B7, if we're going to do a push, we have this one, two, three, and four, and. So we're actually changing to the B7 there on the and, 
after four instead of beat one. So if it, without the push, one, two, three, four, one, two. So we're changing right on beat one. But if we push it forward, okay, bring it a little earlier. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we've changed the chord, the, keep calling it the chord pattern, the strumming pattern is what I mean. God, it's a bit too early for me today, I think. So the strumming pattern would be down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. So we've got now a two bar sequence. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Again, one, two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four. So we're missing out a strum on beat one, which makes it feel a little bit kind of cooler. That's where the push has gone, right? Again, down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, up. That's where the change. Down, down, up, down. Let's do it just with the G to the E chord, so you can see exactly where the push is. So it'll be one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, you have to stick to that strumming pattern exactly. You want to get the push in. Sometimes I add a strum on the and after one in the second bar, so you'd end up with this. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four. Sometimes I go three, and four, and at the end, down, up, down, up. Doesn't really matter, okay? As long as the hand keeps moving all the time, it's going to be in time, it'll be sounding cool. So then you can start to explore those little pushes. So let's just play through it with the pushes now so you can hear it nice and clear. So we got this on, starting with the G. Three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. It's really important. It's kind of the key thing of that song, really. If you listen to the original version, you hear it, you hear it easier on the piano, actually. You can hear the piano pushing. The guitar is doing it as well. Um, but it's kind of it's a nice feel. You don't have to do it. You could keep it straight and not put the pushes in. If you're doing a cover of it, it's your way of doing it. You know, so don't get too hung up on it. But if you want to get it like the record, I think it kind of sounds cool. Um, now, there's another part of the song as well that I just want to show you before we go into learning that uh, little lead lick. Well, I'm going to give you a kind of rough look at the lead lick, uh, which is the bridge part, which is going G, D, to a whole bar of C. So just half a bar on each of those ones again. G, D, C for a whole bar. And then an F chord, really sorry guys, for a D chord. Okay, it's got an F in it, but it only happens for one bar, which is a lot of beginners kind of get freaked out by a little bit. Remember, you can always, uh, it doesn't, it's not 100% right to do it this way, but if you really struggle, you can substitute the F for an F major seventh chord, okay, which isn't a bar chord. Okay, that's a, a good workaround for the F chord. Sometimes it sounds good, sometimes it doesn't. You have to try it and see. In this song, I think it, you kind of get away with it. So that chord sequence again, it's going G, D, C for a whole bar. Again, G, D, and then C for a whole bar. Now we've got G, D, C, G, down to F or F major 7, if you can't do that. To D. Okay, so that's the bit that G. Looks D, C is gonna change to G. 
Every day still it seems the same G I can't deal what people see me to G My god this is hard to sing F So I guess I'll redeem the same A little bit high for me this one uh, Otis Redding I'm not but I'm not trying to be I'm a guitar teacher not a singer anyway So hopefully that'll give you an idea of kind of how that goes uh, For the strumming for that part I normally pick it up a little bit and instead of having this nice kind of laid back strumming where I'm moving my hand like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Normally for that bridge I'd play down, 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 down. So on the one and two and three and four and I move to all down strums. You can hear it like... I do the same thing with the down and up strumming. It doesn't quite have the same kind of movement. And especially if we're using a similar strumming pattern through the whole tune, when it comes to that bridge, it can be really nice to kind of pick it up a bit and do the all the down strums. You know, it makes it, it gives a little bit more of an energy boost, which is important for the listener and for you as a player, I guess, too. So uh, before we finish, let's go and have a, just a very quick look at that little strumming, uh, strumming, it's not a strumming pattern, the lead part that happens in the chorus because it's really iconic and if you've got a buddy that you're playing with and he's doing those rhythms and you can break out that little lead part I think it sounds really sweet so uh, let's go to a close-up and have a look at that. So the little lead lick that's going on in the chorus really cool we start with the first finger barring the tenth fret on the thinnest two strings and then we're going to hammer the third finger on in the twelfth fret of the second string. We do that three times one, two, Three, then we play the thinnest two strings again, still at the uh, tenth fret. Then we play the third finger on the twelfth fret of the third string, and then we move first finger down to the seventh fret. We play those two strings again, the, both at the seventh fret, thinnest two strings with the first finger. Does that twice. Third time it goes. So, and instead of going to that, third finger goes on the 12th fret of the second string, slides up two to the 14th, and first finger goes down on the 12th fret of the thinner string. Kind of does different patterns on, uh, you know, which, what notes he's playing exactly on what order, but as long as you get the slide up, play a couple of those notes, you'll be fine. And last time, Okay, same, but instead of going down the last time, it moves from 12th fret to 13th fret, and you can either put your first finger then on the 12th fret of the thinnest string, or play the open E string, the thinnest E string. Exactly what's being played is a little bit more complicated than that and beyond the remit of doing this video, but uh, if you experiment with this idea of having this one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one. That kind of thing. You'll find here it goes. There's a little kind of flick off, and then here. It's doing it slightly more complicated as well. So just have an experiment if you start off with that as a, as a the main part really is this. That's the part that really sounds like the song, whether you go or whether you go. No one's going to really notice. So if you really want to check it out, then uh, go and have a listen to the original and do yourself a little bit of transcribing. I really hope you enjoy playing this tune. It was definitely one of my favourites when I first started learning guitar. Uh, big deal here really is to make sure that you get your rhythm solid 
simple first before you start trying to do the pushed ones, right? So just keep it really, really simple. Make sure you can make the chord changes fast enough to keep the rhythm hand, the strumming hand, just moving really, really evenly before you start trying to do anything more fancy than that, right? That's a really big deal. That, that if you get a chord that's a little bit fluffy, like one of the notes is a little bit wrong, people won't notice most of the time. But if you get the rhythm wrong, They'll re people will really notice, and it, people won't be able to play along or sing along with you if your rhythm's really kind of weird. You know, your rhythm's got to be solid. It's all about rhythm. The longer you play, the more you're going to realize the rhythm is the, the most important part of it all. So uh, anyway, hope you have a lot of fun doing this tune, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.